let's get to watering. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get Frank about it. Hello, my fellow Carmelos. If you haven't noticed yet, I kind of have a change in location. I'm recovering right now at one of our houses in upstate New York as I just had a surgery a couple days ago. But the show must go on, and I have promised you all some videos on St. Teresa of Avila. So if you have any questions, comments, or ideas about this amazing saint of the church, please leave a comment down below with the hashtag Carmelo. It really helps it to pop out at me so I can really address these things that you bring up with me. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and click that little bell icon. When you click that little bell icon, it reminds you via your email and etc. that um, I put up new videos and etc. So again, if you have anything for me, just make sure you use the hashtag Carmelo down below and click that subscribe button and the bell. Have a good day. Thank you for your time. All right, so last week we talked about the first way St. Teresa of Avila addresses uh, the life of prayer via watering the garden. Now, my camera's going to be a little shaky today because I don't have all my equipment because I am out of my normal area, so I apologize for that. But uh, the first way was through going to the well. You know, it really focuses us on sort of the, the deep recesses of what's going on in a person's life to understand where the grace of God has been present and et cetera. And the thing that marks that first way of watering is a lot of uh, work within the person. So the second way of uh, growing in prayer life, uh, this life of prayer in relation to the watering of a garden, is through the aqueduct. Now, what this really does, my brothers and sisters, is it changes our focus. In the moment that we're using the well, sort of reaching down to the deep recesses of our heart to recall the experiences of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we go to the aqueduct, the focus is moved away from us and focuses on the source of this life-giving water itself, God. Because an aqueduct only works because there's water flowing down from a mountain. So our gaze moves from the self to God, sort of a loosening up of attachments and of all of our labors and etc. So a movement from you know being very doing to just becoming more present and being able to just sit with God. Now this moment of prayer, this... this uh, time of prayer in our spiritual life is really marked a lot with a lot of joy because the water just begins to flow a little bit more freely, this life-giving water of grace that comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And within these moments of joy, we're um, invited to just sit with our Lord and Savior and allow the garden to be nourished to this life-giving water. But as we progress along in this period of prayer, there'll be temptations and trials and etc. And one of the things that we will be confronted with because there will be a time of aridity. What do I mean by aridity? Well, one of the things about using this mode of watering a garden, the aqueduct, is the gardener doesn't control when the water comes. God will give his grace when God wants to give his grace. God will make his presence known when he wants to give his presence known. So there will be this time of aridity where, you know, maybe God is pulling himself back a little bit in order to help us to grow in our ability just to rest with him. And this is to help bring us into a deeper conformity with the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because it's when we learn to embrace the cross and not just our own experiences that we're able to continue our growth in the spiritual life through these different for lack of a better word, levels of prayer. So when we reach this sort of stage level, etc., of using the aqueduct, you know, we've noticed that our focus is moved away from maybe looking at what's been going on in us and our relationship to focus on more the person of Jesus Christ. His life-giving presence just flows a little bit more easily into our, our lives. Our hearts is a little bit more open. You know, there will be a moment of joy and consolation from this movement in the prayer life, but there will be a time where we are brought into an arid moment because you know, we do put some layers into constructing the aqueduct, you know, these recalling these moments of contact with Jesus, but, you know, we can't control when he will make his presence known, when he will give us his grace, and etc. So we have to be aware that within this second way of water in the garden, using an, an aqueduct, sometimes talked about as a spring, etc., is, you know, we are going to be pushed at some point to begin to grow in conformity to the cross. Because any life of a discipleship is defined by the cross because we are called to deny ourselves, 
pick up our cross and follow Jesus. So this movement of prayer begins with that sense of joy where we become a little bit more awoke to ourselves and awoke to the great pleasure that our Lord and Savior gives us. And we are brought to in this journey of life as maybe Jesus experienced when he was a, a child in Nazareth with his parents. You know, we are on the journey that he himself undertook, which will involve Calvary. So as you stew upon this second means of prayer, knowing that there's this movement from joy to aridity, the focus is not so much on the self and recollecting our own experiences, but it's more beginning to focus deeper on God. You know, our hearts become a little bit more freer from the call of always having to do in this relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into just being with him. Because what happens is we get very anxious and busy about filling up the time that another person gives us. Oh, I have to do for you, and I've, we've got to do this. We have to go do that thing. We got to do this, that, and etc. You know, think about when you have a friend that comes and visits you, you know, and etc. And you just want to make sure that they have all these things because you don't want them to get bored. Well, these times of aridity help us to overcome this fear of becoming bored with Jesus because no one can ever become bored with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is always calling us to go deeper. And when we feel that we're getting bored, it might just be that we're struggling with these time periods of aridity in our life where the Lord is working in ways that we do not quite yet understand. So thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed today's video and it helped you in your spiritual life. Know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. And may God continue to bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again for your time today, my fellow Carmelos. If you want to become part of the Carmelo clan, please make sure to leave a comment down below with the hashtag Carmelo, letting me know you want to be a part of this great group that we're trying to develop here to help us all grow and continue to cultivate our relationship with Jesus Christ through the gift of Carmelite spirituality. And if you have any questions or comments for me, also make sure you use that hashtag Carmelo when you write your question or comment down below. It really helps it pop out at me so I can address it in a timely manner. And also, I'll remind you again, please make sure to click that subscribe button and that little bell icon. Because when you click that little bell icon, it helps you receive notifications from YouTube when I put up new content. So thank you very much for your time, my uh, my brothers and sisters out there today. Again, sorry for maybe the, the change in style, but um, I'm recovering right now from uh, a surgery. So if you just keep me in your prayers, I'll be most appreciative. So, and, and like I say in every video, any second that you spend in engaging my content, I'm just oh so appreciative for. So thank you very much for every second of your day that you use to engage what I'm trying to do here to help people grow in the great beauty that is Carmelite spirituality as we all seek to embrace with profound love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks again, my brothers and sisters. Know that I'm praying for you.